All right, so we're in the focus, and I kind of want to go over briefly some things that uh, took this this video so long to get out. Because uh, uh, when the when the two five came out due to the no start, um, I, I that same day, literally that same day, I dropped in the two three. Uh, it took like you know one, I think like an hour or so. Um, hour and a half to get everything in and out um pat myself on the back for that but the car didn't start um it acted like it wanted to turn over uh but it would crank but it wouldn't actually wouldn't start so i've been diagnosing this off camera kind of on camera um at the same time looking at various things air fuel compression uh spark right that's the big four that people talk about uh so for one i can say i know that the car or that the engine has compression this ran in the uh in focus one i know that the engine is getting fuel uh because i can actually physically see the fuel in the fuel well um i cannot verify right now if the car is getting spark one i had to buy a new battery uh, I also replaced the starter. So, um, and for air, uh, I don't think I have an issue with air. Um, currently, uh, everything I have is all plugged in and everything, you know, it should, it should be sound on that front. The fifth thing is looking at the the wires make sure there's no cuts in in the lines looking at the uh pigtails and wire harness leading to each of the uh the spark plugs um uh, the coil coil packs and i didn't see anything that would stand out so we're back um in the car and what one thing i noticed in the car when i put the two five in and when I put the two three back in, is that this pat system flashed, which is bad news because that means that I would have something going on with the ECU or with the ignition um, system of the car and with this key. The other thing that I, I'm worried about is when I went to plug in my OBD2 scanner, it actually couldn't find the ECU. Now, I'll tell you that the battery was was at 11.86, which I don't think it had enough juice to read anything. So, here we are. So, we hear the pump come on. I know you heard that. Uh, the uh, fuel pump came on, so I know I'm I know I'm getting fuel to the car. Let me turn off this sound. I know I'm getting fuel to the car. Uh, I'm going to quickly look over to see if I'm getting any check engine lights, which I know I'm not. All right, I'm going to go over to OBD, and you're seeing this like I'm seeing it right now. Let's see if we can connect to the car. Um, and not have these issues. I might have to uh, do some do some back in. All right. So one of the problems is already solved. The battery the battery being less than twelve volts causes you not to be not for the ECU causes the ECU not to be able to be seen by an OBD2 scanner. So you need at least have a battery that's twelve volts. I wish I could have showed you what it, it showed like fifty different ECUs. You wanted me to choose one. Uh, but it's good to see that my ECU is still alive and kicking. Yes, I want to connect the vehicle. Uh, I want to read the codes, see what it's showing here. All right, so everyone always has this P1000. It's funny. Um, so I don't have any trouble codes. I mean, obviously the car hasn't actually started or anything. And I want to see... Once I start to start the car, what's going to go on? But this is just a view for you all as well to see that, you know, let me go over to my live data um, so you can see, you know, you shouldn't have anything here. 12.2 uh, volts. That's great. 
I don't see anything here um, that stands out. And if you do see something here that's out of range, let me know in the comment section so that I can try to diagnose that. Um, my timing looks good. Throttle position looks good. Um, to I need to check the manual, uh, the uh, the Haynes manual to make sure. But I think I remember these two throttle uh, timing advanced and throttle position being within spec. Um, also with the mass flow air sensor. I think this is all in spec. So I think this should be lower, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, all right. So I'm going to try to fire this over. Oh, yeah. So for people that whenever you reset your um, ECU, well, not ECU, whenever you clear your codes in your car uh, or take the battery out, you're going to have to rerun your one test per trip before you go to get your car um, re-registered, uh, or, uh, put in for an inspection because these things will all be like they're showing here and, uh, you won't pass your inspection until you've, uh, you know, either done each of these tests manually, or you've driven a car long enough for each of these tests to, to cycle off on their own. I have a whole video about each of these tests and how to do it manually. If you're in a tight spot and need to get your car fixed um, that this should help. So I'm going to go ahead and continue running these tests and, uh, I'll get back to you. Stay focused. Um, to see if anything's going to pop up before I try to crank this over. Stay focused. All right. So now I got the key. I got my foot on the clutch here. I'm going to try to fire it up. what I'm getting I wonder what this is so the pat system actually seems to be working um, which is also great that means that the cranking issue has to be something in the engine bay so I gotta go do a lot more digging all right so I bought a new cam sensor I'm gonna try uh, this out versus the old one to see if this will help and we'll go from there excuse me this will be the crankshaft position sensor all right so i uh tried to start it up and uh it still acted like it wanted to start but never actually uh you know fired up so the next thing i'm going to replace is going to be the uh alternator back here because maybe if I if I had a tester I can test to see if I'm getting spark um, I need to actually buy one of those tools if I'm going to be doing this long term uh, I don't know why I haven't bought one yet but I will get around to that uh, I'm going to pull this and put on one I know that works that came off the uh, two three because this one's brand new uh, and I haven't verified if it actually works so I'm going to pull this one put on the two three one if it fires up then goodness gracious anyway let's do that all right so up there uh is where the alternator sits i'm sure all of you know this by now um and if you don't know i'm sorry uh but there it is it's pretty easy to get to um but kind of a little tricky to get out and i'm not gonna be able to show most of this on camera uh, and I got the wrong size down here. I need a size 15 for for those bolts. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, let me go grab that. So I'm back under the car and uh, I'm getting ready to finish the install for the serpentine belt. And in the video that I put out, I, uh, I've noticed I've already come up with some upgrades. So there's a little thing right here that I didn't know um, what, it, what it was for and now I do. So if you have one of these serpentine belt tools, uh, all you need to do is click on or just wrench onto it. I think it's a 15 millimeter socket. Just get, get some leverage onto it like that. And then you can just wrench it down with ease. You don't even have to worry about the bolt up there. Um, that's a 13 millimeter bolt and it's really hard to get to, but this makes the job so much easier. And I wish I would have realized this earlier but I'm happy to share this with you all as we work through trying to figure out why this car isn't starting. Anyway, 
let's get back to it. All right, so after all that work, I fired it up, or excuse me, I tried to fire it up again. Um, car cranks over but does not start. Um, so again, what do I know? I know the car has compression. I know the car's is air sound. Um, I know the car has fuel. I do not know if the car has spark. So I'm gonna test spark, and the easiest way to do that is to pull the spark plug, um, hook up the tester, and see if it's firing. If not, I know that something has gone wrong with the timing, and it's probably the cam position sensor, which I which I replaced with a new one. So this leads me to one of the rarest problems that I've ever seen in uh, the Focus uh, since I've been working on the cars, and that is the wire harness connecting the crank position sensor to, you know, well, I guess the ECU. There might be a kink crack. The signal wire that's on that, uh, that wiring harness might have been severed, which means that the car will never start. Um, there, there is a, a subscriber that had this problem that we, uh, through many weeks of research, figured out. And shout out to you, Will, if you're watching this. Um, turns out that it this process was was what happened to his car. And uh, we changed that wire harness and it fired right up. So that's my next thing. If, if it comes to that, is to uh, try to try to pull one of those wire harnesses and see see what happens so you know sometimes you you work on cars and uh, things just don't go don't go to plan uh, this would make a lot of sense to why the 2.5 was not starting is it that it wasn't ever a 2.5 problem but more of an electrical problem that was you know I still think there's something going on with the 2.5 uh, but an electrical problem behind the two five that just makes this, you know, uh, it, it won't, it'll never start without fixing these electrical problems first. So I need something to baseline. Um, I need to get this working, get this engine fired up and running. I know the engine runs, uh, but I need to get the car fired up and running. And once I know that, once I know that also the transmission is shifting right, well, you know, shifting right when the car's on, it drives. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, I can then re-pull this out after a spell. Put two five back in once I've gone through thoroughly uh, on that end again, and uh, and uh, see what happens. Because you know the the end goal for this whole car build is to have the two five and a turbo dropped in here. You know, uh, I believe the transmission is done, uh, but it needs to be verified. Sorry, this video is like more of me talking than, you know, doing a lot of wrenching. But I've literally been working on this problem for like the last two weeks. Uh, whenever the last video came out, uh, that's how long I was working on it before then. So I think it's been four weeks I've been working on this off off record. Um, so this is why the videos have been uh, less frequent is I'm literally wrenching, coming up, dreaming up ideas, watching other YouTube videos, uh, reading the, the Haynes manual, trying to figure out every inch of detail I can about the car that I don't already know um, and come up with a solution. So you all can at least have just that extra bit of info should these problems happen to you and you've gone through all of the, the big four, fuel, spark, air, compression uh and your car still doesn't spark and or still doesn't start uh it's got to be one of those four you know i know three of these are great because of the car starting and working um and i can't verify spark and i can't verify that i'm actually getting any communication with the timing over so i'm probably going to go ahead and replace the lower control the lower wire harness and uh I will probably show you how to do that so that if this happens to you, you will know how to do that with the engine in the car. It's actually not bad at all. It just takes a little bit of time and um, hopefully the car will start up and we can do some more testing and and uh, get this car back on the road because I miss driving it. Uh, 
But anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. Again, you know, sorry about the more the voicing instead of doing the, the mechanic work. But this is part of the process. The failures will far outweigh the successes, but successes are so sweet if you stick around long enough and, you know, uh, figure these things out. Uh, I wish I kept focus one uh, for that very reason, because I think I know what the problem was with focus one. However, this is going to be it for this video. Uh, Focus Tans signing off. Peace. And oh yeah, so before I do that, I want to uh, talk about the shifter here. Uh, I recently did a video, or in the past did a video, on installing a short throw shifter for the Focus. Uh, and, you know, you can shift through the gears, you know, quite well. And you have your reverse. So the issue is, is that um, I have a, a, a guy on the video who thinks that Installing the reverse or the short throw shifter and removing the reverse lockout is a bad thing. Well, what he probably does not know is that the car, the transmission itself, has a internal lockout system uh, for the MTX75 that when you go into fifth gear, you cannot go into reverse and since the car is off and not moving i can go in reverse but you the the reverse lockout that came with this uh the original equipment is just a redundant feature the transmission itself already has a reverse lockout feature so there's no need for you to have both of these it's already built in internal so that's why um and also, you know, from my own uh, opinion, is this is the five-speed manual. One, two, three, four, five, right? There's no way that I can see from a person that drives the car that you could mistake fifth, which is up, it's right and up, and reverse, which is right and down. There's no way that you can mistake that. I mean, the only thing I could think about where one would need a reverse lockout would be if you are in a six speed manual transmission, like the newer style Focus STs, where the reverse is to the left and up. There, you really would want to have a reverse lockout feature working, mainly because your first and reverse are on the same thrust level. So you want to have that reverse lockout to make sure that you're actually in reverse and not in first, if that makes sense. Um, it, I, look, I, I don't know. I mean, I've just been driving manual. I taught myself how to drive manual. Uh, and looking at the the five speeds, it just doesn't... I, I, I never had a concern being a brand new manual driver of the transmission itself to shifting into reverse while I'm driving forward or if I'm already driving in fifth and it is manually going into reverse like I never had that happen I couldn't even go if I was going like 20 or 30 miles an hour or so I can't even go in first like first has an internal lockout that you can't even go into it uh, which is great because you are really destroy your transmission anyway I hope that helps and you know I don't you know, don't want to step on your toes or anything, but it, uh, the car has its own internal feature. Stay focused.